This tutorial has been provided to explain how to model and design Meshit Blast Lab using MIDASGEN 2015. There are three tutorial videos for modeling, analysis, designing, and this is the first part for modeling. Now we are going to model the structure from the start page of MIDASGEN 2015. Click the new file on the top of the screen and save this file. <clears throat> First of all, check the unit system uh, at the bottom of the screen. Load for kilonewton and length for meter I'm going to use. So <clears throat> in order to create the model, we are going to use the line grid in this time. Go to the structure and grease define line grid. So give the name for the line grid and enter the size that you want for the y direction as well. So now you have line grid uh, on your screen. So once you generate the line grid, you can easily grab the intersect line. So we can easily generate the model. Go to the node, <coughs> create the node. So simply click the four nodes. And then we are going to generate the column on these positions. So in order to do that, go to the material properties. So we are going to define the properties for column first. So, so uh, column will be concrete. Uh, I'm going to use the standard data for properties. And go to the section as well. Define the section for your column. I'm going to use this rectangular shape. So give the size for the column. Now you have your material and section for your column. So in this time, we're going to use this extrude function to generate the column. So column will be generated by node to line element. And you can select the material and section here. And distance you can manually type. So minus 0.5 and select the all nodes and click apply so now you have four columns on your uh, screen so I'm going to generate this position as well uh, so in this time I'm going to copy these four nodes uh, four columns to this position so go to the translate and select all columns that you just created and give the distance you can man you can manually uh, enter the distance but in this time you can just select the distance here to here so i'm going to copy three times and click apply so now you have 16 columns on your structure and the next step we are going to generate the uh, beams in order to generate the automated uh, flash lab. So in order to do that, we are going to give. Uh, we are going to define the section first. In this time, I'm going to give the null for name and round shape. So give the really small size for imaginary beams. and go to the node element and create element so select the section we just defined and generate the beams we can manually generate all the beams uh, among the all the beams along the uh, line grid but in this time I'm going to copy these uh, beams so go to the translate and select the beams and give the distance and give the times but in this time we have to check on this intersect option because we need to 
uh, intersect these vertical beams and horizontal beams. So uh, click apply. Now you have these beams. And same manner, we are going to generate the horizontal as well. <laughs> so give the distance and click apply. Now you have all beams on your structure. So from now on, we don't uh, we don't need the line grids. So I'm going to toggle off this line grid. And <coughs> next step, you're going to generate the uh, mesh sheet blast lab. So go to the node element and mesh sheet and auto mesh sheet. So slab will be generated by the line elements we just created and select the quad triangle type and give the mesh size and we have not defined the uh, thickness for our uh, slabs so in here you can just simply define your thickness and click apply mm. so we have to uh, select the light line element so uh, click this select by plane and click all the line element and click apply and now you have uh, your slab on your structure if you want to see the thickness of your uh, slab go to the display option and you can check on the frame thickness and plane thickness so as you can see the thickness will be displayed on the screen so if you do not want to see the nodes you can also inactivate the nodes like this and <coughs> If you see this thickness of flat slab, the column, column and the flat slab is duplicated in this position. So in order to uh, move this flat slab, we are going to use the offset option on the in the properties. Go to the thickness and click modify. Here we have this option flat offset. So thick thickness ratio, I'm going to give the 0.5 ratio. So a thickness will be moved to this position. So now it's not duplicated in this position. I'm going to uh, inactivate the nodes for our convenience. And uh, to better explain, uh, I'm going to give the different color for column and slab. So uh, in this time, we are going to distinguish these two uh, elements with this material type. So go to the material and just copy the same material type and give this column to the new <coughs> material. So now you have two material type. So go to the display option and draw the element color will be displayed by global color or element or material so in this time we're going to this use this material color and click apply you can see this material color now it's the same so we're going to change this in color tab and material this is the slab color so give some color you want and edge color as well and blend and column as well I'm going to give gray color for this and blend as well so now you now you can see the color is changed so we can easily distinguish the column position and the flat and the flat slab
Next step, uh, we are going to define the domain. The flat slab is divided some domains randomly. So this is not in order. So just uh, delete all the domains except three domains. We are going to define the new domains for this. Select all flat slab and give first domain. Now you have the domain is defined for all slab. And select the slab between the columns position. And give the second domain. Now it's divided into second, uh, divided into two domains. And the last, I'm going to give, give this position for third domain. Why we are doing this? Uh, in design, design procedure, it's easier to distinguish the domain area for each reverse. So give the this third domains here. So now you have first and second and third. So also we can specify the names for this. So I'm going to do this for S1. Click modify. And this one for S2. Click modify. And this one F3. So S1 slab domain is this and S2 and S3. And the next step, we are going to give the boundary condition in uh, boundary condition at the on bottom of the column. So select all the nodes under the columns and go to the boundary and define support. In this time, I'm going to give this pin condition. So now you can see the dx and dy dg is constrained or constrained. <coughs> and the next step, I'm going to give the load. So first, we are going to define the static load case for surface dead load. Click add and dead load as well. Click add and live load. So first give the self weight for minus one to G uh, jet direction. And the slab load, we are going to use this pressure load. So change the, the live load and give minus eight kilonewton per meter square. And select the, all the slabs and give the load. 